Here it is. But it's a sea monster, though. It's a sea monster in the Bible. But it's also a great book on, like, business and uh, econ economics. It's... Then there's Leviathan and Satanism, and then there's in Christianity. In Satanism, according to the author of the Satanic Bible, Anton Zander Lava, which is basically this, this the Satanic verses are, are is just it's a different thing. Leviathan represents the element of water and the direction of west. The element of water in Satanism is associated with life and creation. It may be represented. Uh, by a chalice during ritual. In the Satanic Bible, the Leviathan is listed as one of the four crown princes of hell. Uh, that's just art. So you've got... Here's Anglo-Saxon art that goes back to Christianity. you got the Leviathan in the Middle Ages was used as an image of Satan endangering both God's creatures by attending... Basically like representation of the devil. The thing is, though, is there's not there's not anything in this Wikipedia that rep, that says anything about. Now, here's something about the Hebrew Bible. Can you pull the Leviathan with a fish hook or a tie down his tongue with a rope? Can you put a cord through his nose or pierce his jaw with a hook? While he keep begging for, are you while while he keep begging you for mercy? Will he speak to you with gentle words? Will he make an agreement with you for you to take him as your slave for life? Can you make a pet of him like a bird or put him on a leash for your girls? Will, trader, will traders barter for him? Will they divide him up among the merchants? Can you fill his hide with harpoons or his head with fishing spears? If you lay a hand on him, you will remember the struggle and never do it again. Any hope of subduing him is false. The mere sight of him is overpowering. No one is fierce enough to arouse him. Who then is able to stand against me? Uh, who has claim against me that I must pay? Everything under heaven belongs to me. I will not fail to speak of his limbs, his strength, and his graceful form. Who can strip off his outer coat? Who would approach him with a, a bridle? Who dares open the doors of his mouth, ringed about with his fear, fearsome something, teeth or something? He just keeps talking about the Leviathan in this religious... The, but it's like, um, it's called the... Okay, it's the Hebrew Bible. It's in Job. It's in 41, 1 through 41, 34, being dedicated, describing him in detail. So basically, in the Hebrew Bible or in our Bible too, you're describing the Leviathan or you're listening to the story on how to approach the Leviathan or what's going to happen, or the Le Leviathan. He dares to open the doors of his mouth, ringed by his fearsome teeth. His uh, back has rows of shields tightly sealed together. Each is so close to the next that no air can pass between. They're joined fast to one another. They cling together and cannot be parted. His snorting throws out flashes of light. His eyes are like the rays of dawn. Um, Firebrands stream from his mouth. Speaks of fire to sh shoot out. Okay, so sparks of uh, sparks. I'm sorry, sparks of fire shoot out. Like he's almost speaking fire. Uh, smoke pours from his nostrils as from a bowling pot over a fire of reeds. His breath sets coals ablaze and flames dart from his mouth. Then strength resides in his neck. Dismay goes before him. The folds of his flesh are tightly joined. They are firm and immovable. His chest is hard as a rock, hard as a lower milestone. When he rises up, they might, they, they, um, the mighty are terrified. They retreat before his thrashing. The sword that reaches him has no effect, nor does the spear or, or the dart or the javelin. Iron, um, he treats like straw and bronze, like r rotten wood. Arrows do not make him flee. Sling stones are like chafe to him. A club seems to him but a piece of straw. He laughs at the rattling of the lance. It's capitalism, dude. Uh, his undersides are jagged.